ton to do today because I, well, I didn't like you probably answered, but yesterday we decided it was in our best interest to stop with completing the square and to let you work on your checkpoint and your homework for completing the square rather than persevere and work on quadratic formula notes, which is fine, except you have a quiz on Monday that includes the quadratic formula. So we got to get all our words out on quadratic formula today so we can be successful in that. Before we even worry about that quiz, because the quiz is only going to 30. 30% category. So while it is important, it is not as stressful or as, as, as important as our math workshop test, which is also coming up on Monday. If you're not going to be here Monday or Tuesday, you want to come take it later today, that's great. Come see me. Otherwise, I'm not typing the zeros for the quiz or the math workshop test. Those two things, I promise to refrain from my zero self. I will not type those in until the week after Thanksgiving. I'll give you the whole week back like, to get it together and come see me at some point. Or I tap zeros. Okay, but the math workshop test is happening nonetheless. So whether you're ready to go or not, we're going over as many of these as quickly as we can. The math workshop test is only 20 questions, which is a lot. It's a 60% category grade. It's 100 points. That means each question is worth five points. The first 14 questions, 14, that's over half, are factoring. The first 14 are factoring. So that's why I asked you to have these done and hopefully get your 15 points. If you don't tell me the answer fast enough, I promise you I'll answer it and move on faster. Number one, what do we do? Which is? Okay, uh, four can have a point. So it's A plus five plus B. Perfect. Number two is grouping, but can someone tell me the answer? Okay, 2x minus 3, and then what, Travis? Okay, do you know the answer, Landon? You raise your hand. Okay, I'll give 4 and 5 a point. Okay, so I do factor out a 2x in the first one, and I'm left with 4a minus 3. If I factor out a negative 3 from my second group, I'm left with a 4a minus 3. So yes, it is 2x minus 3, 4a minus 3. Number 3 is an easy factor because our leading coefficient is a 1. Yes, Brady? Yes, he's going ahead and solving. Bless him, bless him for that. So I needed two things that multiplied to 4 and added to 4. So it's z plus 2, z plus 2, which would be better to write as z plus 2 squared. And why Brady's getting two points is because he's the first one to notice today, because I did not notice until right now, this problem we were actually supposed to solve. How do I know we're supposed to solve? Because it has equal zero. If we take the square root of both sides, we'll have z plus 2 equals zero, which is how we end up with z equals negative 2. It's okay if a quadratic ends up with only one answer. As discussed, a quadratic can cross the x-axis once, twice, or none at all. So it's okay, that just means our graph here only crosses once. Perfect, Brady. I didn't even notice that. Genius. Okay, number four is the difference of perfect squares. Yes, Landon? Uh, and what's my final answer? That's correct. 2 squared is 4. 25 squared is 625. So 2b minus 25 and 2b plus 25. That is correct for number four. Number five is not as easy because the leading coefficient is not a one. I'm going to do guess and check because I like that method. But if you did slide divide bottoms up, it would also work. Yes, ma'am. You had your hand up. Yeah. Okay, let's test her out. So she said 5x minus 3 and x minus 3. Well, there's no doubt that the 5... And the x had to stay there because 5 times x is 5x squared. There was no other way to do that. As for the 9, she's right. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. But I could have done negative 9, positive 1, positive 1, negative 9. So she might be wrong. The whole point of guess and check is we've guessed. Now we're going to foil it out and check. So first, 5x squared. Outer, minus 15x. Inner, minus 3x. Last, plus 9. Hey, she's not crazy. It is 5x squared minus 18x plus 9. She's not crazy. That is the correct answer, and she can have a point for that. Okay, 
Okay, I'm going to zoom out so those still looking at number five can hopefully still see it. Let me take my other papers away so those aren't looking We go to number six. What can I factor out on number six? Negative. Travis gets, his group gets points, so five. Uh, if you factor out a negative seven, you're left with a W minus seven T. Perfect. Number seven has four terms, so it's grouping. I need the final answer. Negative. Yes. Thank you, dear. How, you know, when you drive to them fast sometimes, you get a little off. Oh. Okay, so you did grouping and your final answer was? 5x minus what, Drea? 3x minus 3 and then 5x? Sounds right, let's check her. If she factored out a 5 out of the first group, a 5x, she would be left with a 2x minus 7y. I've done that wrong. She didn't do that. You factored out a 2x, didn't you? Okay. She factored out a 2x because 2 is what goes into 10 and 14. Come on, Miss Compton. 2 times 5 is 10, so she's left with a 5x. 2 times 7 is 14, so she's left with a negative 7y. Perfect. And then she factored out a negative 3, so she again was left with a 5x minus 7y. So she's not crazy. How dare I question her? She can have a point. Number eight is an easy factor because the leading coefficient is a one. I need two things that add to negative seven and multiply to positive 12. It is negative four and negative three. But Travis, you said it so fast, we'll give you the point. Negative four, negative three is negative seven. Negative four times negative three is positive 12. Yes, dear, please answer it. You know that's not what I'm going to do, but I'm not saying you're wrong, but you know that's not what I'm going to do. So you can have your point, but you know that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the difference per square. Someone else have an answer with the difference per square? Okay, so this one's Miss Compton. It's 4 minus W squared and 4 plus W squared. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 squared is 16. W squared, W squared, yeah. So if you foil this out, 16 plus 4W squared minus 4W squared, outer and inner cancel out, minus W to the 4. No, we're not going to. But yes, you can. That's hence how he's getting his answer. He broke this one down more and had 2 minus W, 2 plus W, and the 4 plus W squared. And then I think he put these two together to end up with his answer, which is fine. Travis, you can have an extra point. Number 10 is my favorite one of the day because people are going to overthink it. What can you do on number 10? Get a point for that. Mm -hmm. you, there is a GCF of a 3. If you factor out a 3, you're left with 5n squared minus 9n minus 2 equals 0. We've made our life so much easier, but not really that much easier because we've still got a factor. I'm going to have to do it down here, Madam Ray. We've still got a factor, and there's still a 5 in front, so it's not an easy factor. I know it's 5 in. I know it's in. It's got to multiply to negative 2. So is it a plus 2 a minus 1, a minus 2 a plus 1? I don't know. I know it's a two and a one. I just got to decide who goes where. I'm just guessing. I think I say one here, negative two here. I, I, again, guess and check literally means I guess and I check. Now, I know the five in and the in are set in stone. When I'm questioning, like, was it really a plus one or was it a minus one? Is it really a minus two or plus two? Or should the one and two swap places? I don't know. I foil it out and I see. So, first, five in squared. Outer, negative 10 in. Inner, plus in. Last, minus 2. Plus in. This is something I'm going to add today. Minus squared, minus plus in. 
So I do actually get 5n squared minus 9n minus 2. Hey, that's what I had. I guessed correctly. Now, um, I'm out of room, so I'm going to do it out loud. But literally, since it said equals zero, I was supposed to solve it. I'm just doing it out loud because I'm out of room. You can divide both sides of three, the three is gone. I do 5n plus 1 equals zero. I get n equals negative one fifth is my one answer. I do n minus 2 equals zero. I get n equals 2 is my second answer. Factoring with the hardest part, the two answers is the easy. You just set each of the things in parentheses equal to zero and solve. Okay, we're going to keep going. So again, math workshop test, 20 questions, 14 are factoring, 14. Four are reducing radicals. So let's look at 11 and 12. There are four like this. Number 11 is a pain. The only perfect square that goes into 3720 that I can come up with is a really, really small perfect square. The only perfect square that I can find that goes into 3720 is a really, really small perfect square. It's still a perfect square. It is four, four times y. Okay, three is the point. Yes, dear. Um, we're going to 16. We're, yeah, we're going to 16. Good question. Okay, so it is four times 930. So seriously, our answer is two squared to 930. I know the square root of four is two, so it's two squared to 930. I've got to deal with those exponents. I'll give it a point to anyone who can help me with the Q and the R. Okay, I do Q to the third, R to the, and <coughs> under the radical. Great, you can have another point. Seven's an odd exponent. I knew there was going to be one left. Three times two is six. Six plus one is seven. I know Brady's right. 24 divided by two is 12, so I know he's right with the R as well. 11 was kind of a pain. I give you that. That 3720 was annoying. 324, however, not annoying at all. Why? It is perfect square, and the perfect square is 4 gets another point. So it's 18, J to the 10th. 20 divided by 2 is 10. Perfect. That one was easy. So again, <laughs> I, I'm being really repetitive today. 20 problems. 14 are factoring. 4 are radicals. Well, that only adds up to 18. The last two problems on the math workshop test are what we're handling on 13 through 16, which is can you deal with exponents? What are the deal? Do you remember your laws of exponents? Let's actually go in reverse. Let's start with number 16. Yes, dear. It would, and you can have a point for that. When we're dividing, we subtract our exponents. When we divide, we subtract the exponents. We were supposed to remember that. On 15, we're multiplying, so what are we supposed to do the exponents? We're going to add them, and what do you get? Brady gets the point. I mean, yeah, Brady gets the point. You understand there's an understood one there. So I get that 14 minus 6 is 9. I mean, 8, but you have y to the 1, y to the 8, which is y to the 9. It's 9. Or you could say 1 minus 6 is negative 5. Negative 5, 5 plus 14 is 9. Regardless, when you add 14, negative 6, and positive 1, you get 9. So if you got 8, you forgot about that understood 1, and you needed to add it in. Okay, we are going to let number 14 go. I don't recall what the problem is on the math workshop test, but I promise you if it's a fraction when I'm changing it, I just, I mean, like, rule the exponents is difficult enough. I cannot not. The only reason we might want to practice that one is to deal with that negative 3 exponent. But don't worry, 13 still has a negative exponent we're going to have to take care of. 
Okay, on 13, we're raising a power to a power. Like we're raising negative 2 to the third. We're going to raise B to the negative 2 to the third. We're going to raise C to the third to the third. You actually have to write it out. Can you do it all in your head? Absolutely. I'm just proving a point. We're raising everything to the third power. When you're doing that, when you're raising a power to a power, what are you supposed to do with the exponents? <coughs> you are supposed to all multiply. And so can you tell me the final answer? One point if you say what I think you're going to say. Two points if you fix it. No. Yeah, I'm going to move it at the end, but yes, Landon. Four, y'all can go ahead and have a point for that. I'm just going to do it now. Negative two to the third is negative eight. Negative two times negative two, positive four times one more is negative eight. You're just supposed to know that. Again, if I put it in my calculator, in parentheses, negative two raised to the third power, it would tell you negative eight. That's a number. I've got B to the negative 6 because negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. I've got C to the 9 because 3 times 3 is 9. But table 4 is completely correct. And the issue with this is that we cannot leave that negative exponent. That's not allowed. So if you have a negative exponent, you have to punish it. And you have to either move it to the denominator or move it to the numerator. Right now it's understood to be in this numerator. So we're going to move it to the denominator. It's negative 8, C to the 9 over b to the 6. Travis, you were saying something. If it's a negative under the radical is when we start using i. We don't have any radicals or square roots right now. So no. That's a good question though. Okay, are there any major questions about our math workshops? Okay, then let's roll on to the notes. Those who aren't paying attention, bless their hearts. They still have a math workshop test on Monday, and they still have a quiz on Monday. No zeros are going to hurt. Okay, brief, quick synopsis. We've been working on completing the square. We decided there were, there were easy problems, there were medium problems, and there were hard problems. There are five questions on our quiz on Monday. The good news is, only two of them are completing the square. The even better news is one of them is an easy, meaning that the leading coefficient is a one, and we can roll. When it's a one, life it seems a lot easier. We don't end up in fraction land to begin with. Now, sadly, the second one is a hard, which means that leading coefficient is not a one, like on number four when it was a two which is what we dealt with yesterday, what to do if the leading coefficient is not a 1. So again, there are two quiz questions on completing the square. One is nice, the leading coefficient of 1. The other is not nice, the leading coefficient I think is a 2. It's annoying. Okay, so we did completing the square. I gave you some time during class yesterday to work on these five problems. If you've not showed me yet, that's fine, but I know me. I might not type in the zero for a quiz and a test, but if you've not shown me these five by Tuesday, I'm probably going to have typed in the zero for that. Now, I'm willing to fix it after the break, but I know me. I'm going to type in the zero for it. So if you've done these five and want to show me when I stop rambling, that would be wise. Yes, dear. You just got to show the word. Okay, and then you know I sing. So not only do you have these five problems, which I thought you were working on yesterday, and that checkpoint, which only like four of you passed yesterday, so we got to work on that again today. Not only do you have that, but I'm now telling you, you've got one more thing on your plate. These five quadratic formula problems are yours. Would it be wise to have them done by Monday since you know you have a quiz on quadratic formula on Monday? Sure would be. So page 23 is your problem. Now, we're going to work through four of them super fast. So if I can do four super fast, surely you can do five. Only one more. But anyway, I digress. So page 23 is yours as well. It's okay if I don't see it till so my plan for Monday is math workshop Monday and test and the quiz. And then my plan for Tuesday is 
whatever Dalen's missing that we've done recently. I'm going to say, hey, Dalen, I never saw your page 23 or whatever. I'm also going to offer her a bonus. It's a completing the square turkey bonus. If you're not going to be here Monday or Tuesday and you want the bonus anyway, just tell me and I'll get it for you. Okay. Moving on. So, that's what we're doing Monday and Tuesday in case you're worried. As for today, all I'm doing is page 24. I've got four problems and I'm done. I sang you my song yesterday. The hardest part of the quadratic formula is literally remembering the formula. I'm going to write it at the top of my paper. A and a B plus or minus square root. B squared minus 4AC over 2A. That is the hardest part is remembering the formula. If you know the formula, I'm going to call it plug and chug math. We plug numbers in, chug numbers out. Now somehow this weird out looking formula is still supposed to relate back to what we've been doing. So let me... Ms. Cotton? Yes, ma'am. Do you remember if Catherine Doyle was in second period today? No, ma'am, she was not. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, let's relate it back to what we've been doing. So I'm drawing a picture. You know, we've been talking about quadratics and their roots. They can have two roots. They can have one real root. Or they can have no roots where they don't cross the x-axis at all. And strangely enough, this relates to this formula. More specifically, there's a part of this formula that's super duper important. And if we calculate this tiny part of the formula, we know everything about our graph. We don't even have to know the numbers, like where it crosses, but we know about where it crosses. We know a lot of stuff. This part under the radical, the b squared minus 4ac, that's the most important part of the formula. So if you know b squared minus 4ac, if you know that value, you know things about your graph. And it's called the discriminant. B squared minus 4ac is called the discriminant. Okay, so if, you know, we're dealing with square roots now, if we calculate and we get a nice number, like let's say square root of 36 or square root of 6, we get a number, then it's the kind of picture that has two real answers. We cross the graph twice. twice. If, when we calculate this part under the square root, we get a zero. Well, that's the kind of graph that only crosses the x-axis once. And if we end up having a negative number under our square root, well, you and I both know if there's a negative number under the square root, that's when you need to start using i. And if we're using i, it's obviously imaginary roots, so we're not crossing the x-axis at all. Okay, so that's all on number six. Part A says, let's find the discriminant. If we know the discriminant, we know a lot about our function. Okay, so the discriminant is B squared minus 4AC. The discriminant is this. So literally, I'm going to calculate B squared minus 4AC. My A in this problem is negative 5. My B is 4. My C is 1. So B squared minus 4AC is 4 squared minus 4 times negative 5 times 1. What do you end up getting? Well, I know this is 16. I know this is negative 4 times negative 5 is positive 20. So what I finally get under the discriminant? Yeah, it's 36. Larry Cooper's going to have a point. Okay, since we got a number for our discriminant and we're happy, part B says, based on this number, can you describe the number and type of roots? Well, yes, I can. Since we got a number, that means it has two real roots because it must cross that x-axis twice. So if we had gotten zero, we would have said one real root. If we had gotten a negative number, we would have said there are no real roots. <laughs> so seriously, we already know a lot about our graph and we've yet to actually even use the formula. The formula is going to help us find exactly where these two real roots occur but heck, just the discriminant already tells us a lot about what these two roots should look like. Okay, so part C is I'm going to actually write it out. If you don't want to write out the formula over and over and over again, I do not blame you. I would not if other people, if I didn't need to try to explain to others what I'm doing, I would. 
Okay, so for us, negative b is negative 4, plus or minus square root, we'll come back to that in a second, over 2a, well, a is negative 5. I'm not going to bother to do the b squared minus 4ac again. You and I already did that part. It was 36. I'm just going to plug in the 36. And then you're like, well, this is rolling. I know what the square root of 36 is. That's 6. So I've got negative 4 plus or minus 6 over negative 10. Well, if Andrew wants to use his calculator, he can, but it's really no big deal. Negative 4 plus 6 over negative 10. Negative 4 minus 6 over negative 10. So his two options are, let's see, this is 2 over negative 10, which is negative 1 fifth. Definitely zoom in, that would definitely help. This is 2 over negative 10, which is negative 1 fifth. And the other answer is negative 10 over negative 10, which is positive 1. So our graph does cross the x axis twice. It crosses at negative 1 fifth and 1. Now I'm in a hurry because I need to do a couple more problems like this, or else I would say, hey, let's go back to the beginning, graph this thing check the zeros with our calculator and make sure our calculator actually crosses at those two spots. And if I did this, this is where I'm going to say the words that I've said all week and someone's going to make me mad and still do it on the quiz. Notice that my answers are fractions. If you give me decimal answers, I don't know that Dre is just not using our calculator tricks to begin with. Because if you press second calculate zeros, it's going to tell you that one of the zeros is negative 0 0.2. Negative 0 0.2 and negative 1 fifth are the same thing. I don't deny that. But if you give me only decimals, that makes me think Drea didn't actually use the formula. I mean, I should see work on her paper like this, right? Drea didn't actually use the formula. Drea just used the calculator. Can you use your calculator to check yourself? Yes. To get you out of using a formula? No. Okay, so you're smart. Ms. Compton worked work an example with two roots. She's going to work an example with one root and an example with zero root. Obviously, just got to keep going. So, number seven, I'm going to do the discriminant. That's b squared minus 4ac. Can't look in the right at the same time. So, for us, b squared is 22 squared minus 4. What's a? Travis, get the point. And did you say it as well? Landon, did you say it as well? No, I think it was Eric. Eric, you can have a point. And then what's C? Okay. Uh, Travis, I'm going to give it to Larry. She needs her point. Larry, you can have a point. Okay, when you actually calculate this, what do you get? Minus what? Minus what, Eric? Yes. Yes. At one is a point. Okay. We got zero. Which means, what about our roots? It is a one real root. You can have another point. And you're like, okay, so the discriminant here is that I have one real root. Why does that happen? Well, here's why. So if we go to our handy dandy formula, negative b plus or minus square root, b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And we actually plug in our things. So for us, negative b would be negative 22. Plus or minus, you and I already calculated that, it's 0 over 2a. We get negative 22 over 2, which is literally just negative 11. We got what answer? Well, duh. We said there was only one answer. It only crossed it once. So, if Andrew's checking himself, if he graphed number 7, he better make sure that parabola only crosses once. Or else he's done something wrong. What do you think is going to be the value of the discriminant on number 8? What do you think is going to be the value of the discriminant on number 8? We already done a 0. We've already done a positive number. It's going to be a negative number when you can have a point. Which means we're going to be in an imaginary world because we're saying there's going to be a, ne a negative under the square root. So when we do b squared minus 4ac, we're doing negative 11 squared minus 4a... C, 
for this, I believe we get negative 19, but for Jesus, somebody needs to check me. Negative 19. Brady, you can have a point. Okay, so I'm scared. Since I have a negative value under the discriminant, there are no real roots. But if you're really being fancy, we are going to find two answers. Those answers are both imaginary. So if you'd rather put two imaginary roots, that's not incorrect. That's completely correct. You're right. Our graph doesn't cross the x-axis. But does it not mean once we use this formula, we're not going to find some numbers? Because we are. And again, if you don't want to write the formula every single time, Lord knows if I could get out of this, I would. So it's negative b, so negative, negative 11, plus or minus square root. We already calculated that. It was negative 19 over 2a. A is 7. What times what is 19? <laughs> nothing. There ain't nothing we can do. One, you can have a point. So we're seriously going to leave it as 11 plus or minus <laughs> over 14. What am I going to put with the part with the radical? Square root of 19, I. T, 3, you can have a point. I knew it was a negative under the radical, so I'm going to use I. And seriously, that's the way I would leave my answer. Now, if Kaylin insists putting 11 plus square root of 19, I over 14, comma, 11 minus square root of 19, I over 14, she can. Why is she doing that to herself, creating this whole nightmare of work? Why do you think I have one more problem left to work? I already did one with two real roots, one real root, no roots. No, it actually has. I mean, there's, we, we find all the things. No, let me, I guess I should tell you. Let's just do the discriminant and you'll see why I'm doing this one. I, I should, I, you know, I shouldn't open that can of worms. There's a reason we're doing number nine. What do you get for the discriminant? Well, first you got to put it in standard form. This one makes you work a little, a little more, more bang for your buck. That's good. What do you get for your discriminant? Nine minus it. Twenty-four. I got thirty-three. So the reason I'm doing this one is because I didn't get a pretty, pretty perfect square, did I? So I'm still going to have two roots. It's just that I know in advance, P.S., since this is an ugly discriminant, those roots are ugly, ugly decimals. So I know it has two real roots, but no one ever said they were pretty. So if I quickly do part C and actually plug in my formula, Again, if you don't want to write the formula over and over again, please, God, don't. I get negative 3 plus or minus square root. We already calculated that. It's 33 over 2a, 2 times 2. Uh, Ms. Thompson? Yes, ma'am. Do you remember Karen Velasquez's class was in second period today? No, ma'am, she wasn't. I just stinked today. I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. And since I'm out of room and clearly out of time, I'm going to change that 2 times 2 to a 4. Literally, I would leave my answer as negative 3 plus or minus square root of 33 over 4. That's fine. You can't break down square root of 33. If you want to calculate the decimal and type it in your calculator, you can. I think the positive one is like 0.686. So then Andrew can go on his calculator and make sure, does my graph actually cross at 0.686? Yes, it does. But Andrew sees why I don't want the decimal. Decimal implies Andrew did not need formula. I want it as it is. That's great to me. Okay, I'm sorry I talked too much. I'm sorry there are all the things. You may learn. Sorry, the algebra tray is going to be real fast. Is there something you want to show me before you leave or you want to come get the turkey bun?